Pat in the next phase. Uh, as a class, we've done our two freehand concepts. And it's what's next that we'll be talking about in this uh, discussion. Uh, of course, if you guys need more information, you're going to refer back to the How to Hack Your Pet series that actually talks about each one of these steps. So um, just for a reference for that. But this is more our general discussion in class. And I'd like to just help you out where we are. We've just finished up to two freehand concepts. And have you guys actually selected your best solution yet? All right, so I'll talk about that. We're going to talk about how to prepare your actual drawing sheets as well, just in this lesson. And then the next ones, we'll talk about the floor plan, elevations, etc. So, we're a little behind on our actual dates, but remember these were our due dates. In the last column, these are actual dates. For this term, fortunately in this class, we've set out the rest of this term to just work on our pad. So, we should be finished by end of next week. Almost at our two-point perspective. That's our aim. We've got time in class to work on it. That's fi we finish our term work. So we're just focusing on our pet. So you have to, for yourself, say, well, every day that you're here in my class, it's ticking one of these boxes. All right. All right. So let's, for today, what we have to do is we have to select the best solution and we have to know how to prepare our drawing sheets for phase two. Now, phase two is the what we call the working drawing section. That's the actual drawings that will be submitted for example, your um, builder, the contractor that's going to build um, the conference center. So the quality of this will have to be up to that standard where someone can actually take that and build with it. All right. So selecting the best solution, I'm going to show you, I've got a couple of pads here from previous learners that really did well. I'm going to talk you through and show the, you how they did it just now. But let's look at selecting the best solution and we refer to First of all, two pages. The one is the actual PAD document, which I have here. We're on page 14 or 13 and 14. And then the second one that we'll refer to is your checklist. Okay. So if we look at page 13 in your uh, PAD document, we finished number three here, which was our new detailed free hand drawings. We're now here at page four or point number four. And I'll zoom in for you to make sure you can able to read it. So what does it require? We have to select the best solution that will demonstrate an in-depth understanding of the scenario and the context of the design brief. All right. So on a separate A3 page, you have to now compare and evaluate the two freehand solutions. And this is how you're going to do it. You have to show me that you've actually considered the two and uh, decided which one is the preferred one. You have to create a table with a minimum of six relevant and descriptive criteria that will facilitate a measurable comparison. Okay. So the table, the fact that you're going to draw a table that's got columns and rows in, that's the first part here. The relevant six criteria needs to be descriptive that will facilitate measurable comparison. So how would you compare the two free and concepts? What are the things that you think you will look, have to look at to determine whether the two are actually, which one is is better than the other. Would, where would we get this descriptive criteria from? The specifications. The specifications. Those were specified as things that you need to... Now, for instance, <coughs> let's take, for instance, this... Um, can I say... Would I say as a descriptive criteria the size of the um, conference, conference room, for instance, as one of my specific... as, as evaluation... Or would you rather, because we want it to be descriptive, or would you rather say the ease of access and the usability of the conference room? Yeah, you hear? Sometimes kids just go to the specifications and they say, okay, I have to have a toilet. All right. Now, in the one freehand concept, they don't draw a toilet. In the second one, they draw a toilet. So, okay, for, for, of course, the one. In, but that's not, that's not descriptive. Descriptive would be, okay, we need to have two smallish conference rooms. That's joined with the door in the middle, all right, that I open up. Both of your concepts are going to have those two, two rooms with the door in the middle. The question is, which one of those two concepts is going to be the most practical or the most usable? So when you come up with your descriptive criteria, it's not just listing, uh, does it have a, uh, two conference rooms? Both of them should have the conference rooms. It is, is the usage of it, the access to it. So you come up with something describing that criteria. So 
Yes, your six relevant criteria can come out of the specifications. That can be your starting point. But you have to describe it in a way of actually weighing it up to it. It's not just, does it tick it? You make, make sense. It's a bit more that's required. And then, then you have to create and apply a simple self-explanatory rating scale to, to score each solution against each other. So you have to create it and you have to apply that rating scale that you come up with. All right. And that can be as simple as saying, okay, well, let's say my criteria is for, let's say for instance, one criteria is the uh, uh, use and the access of those conference rooms. So the one has got great easy access. The second one, maybe there's a little bit of difficulty with access because of the placement. So now you've, you've compared them. The one you rate five out of five. That's full marks. It's great. It's easy accessible. The other one, there's a bit of a challenge with the access. <coughs> so you're going to give that a three out of five. That is the rating scale. And that to me is already self-experimentary. Five out of five, great. Three out of five, not so great. Um, and you're going to have to score each one of them. Once you've scored them, you have to explain why you've given that score. You have to justify that score with listing positives. So you have to go and explain why is it that I've given this one 5 out of 5 and the other one 3 out of 5. It can't just be, um, you know, yes, because it did have a door or didn't have a door. What's the, why do you say the one's access is better? Because of the placement, the position, whatever. So that's the other one. So it's the creating the table, descriptive criteria, creating and applying the rating scale, and then explaining, justifying why you gave the score. All right, we look at an example now. You're going to complete this page by doing this, writing a comprehensive summary, giving the reason for your selected free and solution. So now, once you've done this, just a paragraph like this, two or three sentences, giving a summary with the reasons why you've selected concept one or concept two, you must in that summary include if there's any changes. So let's say between me and you, we decide, or you yourself feel, hey, I have to move this door, then that's a change that you're going to make. So you're going to just summarize, okay, from this, that I've done, this evaluation, I've realized, even in my final concept, I'm still going to make this change, and you're going to list that. Um, all right. If there's nothing, of course, you're going to say no changes to be made, but then the floor plan that you draw for us next up, this floor plan, all right, needs to be looking exactly then as your final solution. Any changes between this floor plan and that freehand concept that you've chosen must be shown for us here or listed. All right. Must be clearly described. All right, that's this. Let's quickly um, look at the checklist. We're going to be jumping around before we get into the actual um, examples. So here we go. Number four here. There's 10 marks up for grab in this place. So you're going to rate yourself here, of course. Do you have a suitable table created for the selection process? A table will have rows and columns. Is, do you have one? Yes, you tick it there. Minimum of six relevant and descriptive criteria that, 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 that I explained, which facilitates this comparison, yes. Is there a simple rating scale created and used to score each solution against each other? Is it? Yes. Each score justified by describing the positive and negative? Yes. So in your column, you're going to need one row, one column. Or in your table, you're going to need a column for your descriptive criteria. You're going to need a column for your rating scale. You're going to need a column for your justification and at the end you have that summary each one of these counts two ends up with 10 out of 10 all right before i go on to show you the practical examples let's look at the one more thing that i'd like to discuss in this quick lesson so now if i have done that the next thing that you're going to do before you can start with this phase, is to actually prepare your pages for the drawings ahead. Okay. So you have to present the selected solutions as a set of working drawings, like I've said, and a pictorial drawing that meet the following criteria. So all the drawings after now, from now must do the following. All the working drawings must be prepared on an appropriately sized drawing sheet set up with the correct borders. Okay. All right. Then one of these sheets must be set up with a complete civil title panel. Only one of them must have the complete civil title panel. I'm going to show you exactly and talk you through that. But the rest of these pages must still have proper neat borders. 
with all the details, the page number, your name and surname, the date of completion, the title of the drawing. Okay? The drawing must provide drawings must provide clear evidence that a high level of competency has been attained. Of course, we're just doing instrument drawings. Um, all right. One entire working drawing must be prepared using a pencil and drawing instrument. The others can be done CAD. We are going to do all of ours in pencil. All right. The perspective drawing may be prepared using either pencil or drawing instrument or CAD. We are just doing pencil and drawing instruments. All right. Well, for a couple of reasons, we don't have CAD at the school. Second reason is what are you going to get in the final exam? A CAD exam or a pencil exam? Pencil, all right? And all of these drawings, you are going to get come the final exam. Um, or, of course, there they say schools that do not have CAD must do everything in pencil. All right. The title panel. This is the last thing that I want to pay attention to. The title panel and all aspects of all drawings must comply with the guidelines, drawing symbols, graphic symbols, <coughs> and representations contained in SANS. Okay. So, we need to, according to our checklist here, Okay, we look at, we've just done selecting. Now the layout of the drawings. All right, a drawing sheet, appropriately sized drawing sheets. Are you using A3? Yes. Do you have borders on all sheets? Yes. Then, do you have a complete SANS compliant civil title panel on one drawing sheet? All right, I'm going to show you this example. It's also going to be, uh, in the download of the description of this video. It's also, of course, examples on the actual how to hack your pad series. Have a look at that description. Plenty of downloads to help you out. All right. And this is important one. You can see there it counts 7 out of 10. So let's look at a couple of examples. First, we've just done the title panel. So let's look at that. Before I zoom out here, of course, you all have seen a title panel. Now, this one is... In Afrikaans, unfortunately, but I'll talk you through. In English, at the bottom, you're going to have your own reference code, internal reference code, who controlled it. You can put my initials, Mr. SK, your page number. The scale of the drawing that is on this page. Now, um, the site plan is a good one to you, draw the title panel for, because the floor plan is going to take a lot of space on your page. So, preferably this. Um, you could do on the site plan of my, or maybe one of the elevations or even the sectional elevations. But one of the pages must have a title plan. You have your own date, your own name, the scale of what drawing there is on the page, your project number, internal one, drawing number, all internal, come up with your own. Then your project is going to be proposed new conference center. And you can elaborate on that. This was last year's title. So this year it will read proposed new conference. Conference Center, blah, 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 blah. Site plan is the title. Who printed it? Come up with your own printing company. The date. Your own company logo with your own in information here. And this uh, you can come up with. Then you have your list of revisions. And we also start from the bottom, working yourself up. And this you can actually use as actual revisions that you actually do. You can add them here. All right. So leave enough space. And then you're going to have place for your signature and the client's signature and any notes that you might need uh, depending on the drawing this was for a site plan you might have um, your uh, uh, land surveyor table but this you will be determined by of course what drawing you are in if i just zoom out so you can see the bigger page and this was with the compliments of mr willifier who's my neighbor um, so nice border all around and then title block at the end i'll also uh, include i'll add actually now in, from now on, I got a SANS, another SANS document that specifies the title block. I'll add that also for you guys as a download. Okay. Let's look at some paths to look at how learners did this. The first one here would be our, um, so we've done the two freehand concepts and then this evaluation needing to take place. Okay. So it's on an A3 page, clearly done with your name, page number, there's a title. Remember the title, the, t the number next to it needs to correspond with this four here in the checklist. And this four corresponds again with your PAD document. So always keep the numbering as they work together. They explain to us what is the selection scale here, or the, the, the scale. So zero was non-compliant, five was well done. 
Then the table on the left hand side is six criteria. All right. You, can you have more than six? Of course. Can you have less? Please not. All right. Six, six criteria. And then concept one, concept two, and then there's the rating. So the first one, four, concept two, five. And the explanation next to it, the motivation, the positive. This can probably be in, um, you know, you could have it in one column and just have a bit more writing. But you don't have to split your uh, explanations. That could be in one column. That gave this then a total at the bottom. So from this total, it's easy to see that number concept 2, uh, 28 out of a possible 30. And so that was then the concept. Selected. Okay, so then you conclude with concept two will be used, and you have your summary that, like we've talked it through, and any um, additional changes needs to be indicated at the bottom. Okay, happy chaps. All right, if we look then at um, the next drawing, which was the floor plan, uh, of course, a lot of information on this floor, floor, plan, floor plan, but look at the title block, that's actually what we having to show here on the side. So this needs to be done. Make sure you print your writing here. It's not freehand. Um, it needs to be well done. Can I do this on a computer and print it out on A3? Of course you can. Yeah, you can. All right. But the big thing is, is this title block um, fully compliant? Can I do a civil title block on every page? Of course you can. Okay. But we want, we're going to check one. So make sure you've got at least one that is done to high stand. Sir, yes. Um, so we can't like print out the title plan and then glue it on. I yeah, it's a good question. Well, you can stick anything on, but the moment that you st stick something on, it does not look like it was thought out. So and it, it you know it it just doesn't look neat. So please. Do either an A3 design, you can do it in Word and do your title panel um, and have all this really neat and you print it out and then you draw on it. But don't stick something on light later, please not. Okay, let me show you one or two more examples because that I know is what inspires all of you. So, let me see here. I... Okay, there's also a nice floor plan. Um, not that clear for you to see, but again, a nice title panel on the side here with all the different... You can see all the revisions that was done here. You just see the selection process. All right, looks a little bit differently, but the same process followed. Selection scale on top, criteria, scoring, and then she did a positive and a negative column comparing both. And in the end, concept two beat also this one all right let's see if there's one more that i can show you all right here's the last one okay that was a selection process again all right so you welcome to do this on a computer and then there's a floor plan, of course, in this one. Look at where she fitted in her title block was on the elevations. Looks nice, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, this is quality work. And I think that helps you see where you need to end off. You know where you are at the moment. You know the time that's ahead of you. And um, there is quite a few work that needs to be done. So may this be some exciting opportunity for you to show me what you're able to do. All right. All right, so let us start in class. We're going to hand out pieces of paper. You're going to start now. You can do a rough of your selection, either on your devices or by hand, or you can start with your title blocks and preparing your papers. All right, next time I'm going to talk through the floor plan so that you can get that started. All right.